Hey everybody, it's Cliff from Enochian.today, and today, <laughs> or tonight rather, I will be talking about Jebbafall. So, looking back at the video series that I've done, trying to help folks, really taking a step back, really what I've been trying to do is lower the barrier to entry to what I think is a pretty powerful system, a pretty effective one, not only for practical results, but also for spiritual development. And yeah. <laughs> so where did I start? We Well, I started by suggesting taking a look and just getting your feet wet by doing doing a call to an aether specifically text the lowest one it's simple it's uh i haven't found too many problems um sharing it with folks either live or via zoom um also uh then i recommended um you know going from that to the heptarchy which is relatively simple uh, and then looking at maybe some of the watchtowers, stuff like that, all of the experiences of doing the calls, and then um, Libra Loga, you know, and working on that. And this is, again, it's just my approach. It's, you know, there are different parts to the system. I'm sure there's parts that I don't know. I'm by far, <laughs> far, far and away not the world's foremost expert on Enochian. But I did find it pretty hard to hack through on my own. So this is sort of like a synthesis of a lot of different authors who know way more about it than I do. And they've all shared their approaches. And I'm just suggesting ways to progress through this system. So I had that, you know, suggested track basically. And, you know, you can open that up for criticism or whatever. But why did I have that? mainly because what I found for myself is that following this approach not only got my heart uh, open more, more uh, softer heart, and generally helped mature me probably by about, I don't know, you know, 10, 20 years, did I have all of the experiences? No. So, you know, there's still more to have. Um, so for example, recently I lost my stepfather. That was hard. Um, and going through that grieving process, um, there's certain things that only experience can teach you. Um, but regardless, I did find that this experience really helped me get my priorities straight. And it's been pretty humbling, you know, uh, it's been really a wonderful blessing, though. Some really big blessings have come into my life. Some stuff that I would not have expected. And generally speaking, I'm very grateful for all of it. And when you get to that point of gratitude, then a lot of stuff falls away, right? And you can really get to experiencing life and appreciating it because it's short. So, okay, so what is Jebbafall? <laughs> After all that, um, let's take a look. So Jebbafall, let's just give you a little overview here. And I apologize, my cat might come in. So Jebbafall, right? So we have another one of these uh, interesting seven letter uh, words. So that's usually when it's a sign of an important one, when it's uh, seven letters. And the, in fact, the first word of Libra Loga uh, was Zuresk, which is seven letters, Z-U-R-E-S-C-H. Okay, so let's talk about it. What What's the deal with it, right? Well, this idea of Jebbafall came, it was supposed to come after Libra, Libra Loga, right? Let me get a better angle here. It's supposed to come after Libra Loga, the book that I mentioned in a previous video. Go back to that one if you want to find out what it is. And then after this, this uh, ritual was done, we, we strongly suspect it was done 
because the angels then say, you know, we know that it took him forever to write the book and to make this perfected copy. Uh, and then when I say they, of course, I'm talking about John Dee and Edward Kelly, that after that uh, book came, that 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 they fin- that they perfected it. At least this is the suspicion that they did eventually write this perfected copy, albeit like more than a year overdue. <laughs> uh, and I explained what that perfected copy is later. Uh, then it's after that, after they pro- apparently did something, you know, some Jebbafal ritual, which we do not know, then we get the Enochian calls. Uh, and this was considered basically a partial gift, okay, to John Dee and Edward Kelly, but we have no record of what this actually was. So one of the interesting things that I took a lot of my cues from when I did basically what you should now obviously come to understand as a reconstruction of this ritual or an imagining of the ritual, right? Because Enochian, it's it's wonderful, but it's definitely reconstructed in major parts. And this is one of them. This is a big one, right? So in case it's not clear, this is this is basically us using me taking a lot of cues from uh, Father Aaron Leach, and this is his website. His I don't know if it's his current. Uh, he has another one, so I'm not sure how up to date this Kef seven 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 one is. But regardless, um, this uh, the the cues that I took when I did this ritual originally. Uh, come from there. So he did, you'll want to search again, I mentioned this in a previous video, you'll want to search for CH02, CH04, which are the Loga and Jebbaful rituals on this site. And he, it's wonderful. Now, I do want to say this is from a previous manuscript, apparently, probably from his um, Enochian, essentially Enochian grimoire um, book, a previous draft of that, and these are probably chapters that he decided not to include, but he did leave them up and publicly available uh, for, probably for people like like me, but I don't want to speculate too much. But regardless, I found these incredibly helpful. Um, Father Aaron Leach probably knows as much as one can be expected about Enochian uh, from any one human being. Um, you know, there are other folks, you know, from other traditions. I don't, I can't speak to what uh, Father Leach's religious views are, but him and maybe David F. Jones are the two uh, people who I would say, as far as I know, know more than anybody else. Uh, Jason Louvre, Deborah Harkness, you know, these are all really big names. So I do recommend looking into them. And I'll probably, you know, put all of his books on there. I do, I, I try to do that because I want, I'm pr- trying to break down what I've learned and certain parts that I find important, but he gives you the huge overview. And he delivers, okay? <laughs> so I'll put the books, the relevant books, including the EEG in the, in the links, in the link. Okay, so what does he talk about when he gets into this in these two chapters? So he talks about this idea of uh, Jebbafal as unlocking maybe 50, maybe clearly 49, because the angels talk about 48 and then a last gate, so 49-ish. and But this sort of parallels uh, this idea of the 50 gates of Binah in Judaism. So these 50 gates of understanding, right? And that's one of the things I do want to emphasize here that, and I probably should have emphasized it more in a previous video than I'm about to upload. Oh, well, <laughs> is that... Um, Enoki and I found it just really opens up your understanding and your perception. Uh, and that's all I can really say about it. And the rest is just like, you got to do it, you know? Um, but anyway, so this, this whole idea is sort of this mystical idea of I'm going to take these steps and, you know, try to sanctify myself and go through this, what is basically an ordeal. Okay, this is, this is a spiritual ordeal something that you take on for the purposes of illumination, right? So 50, 49, probably I'll say 49 days, but it parallels the the, the Moses and uh, the counting of the Omer. And I definitely want to write that down because I forgot. So I'm going to write it down right here. So this is a Jewish tradition 
related to Passover uh, of the <laughs> Omer, which is, it's it goes back to a harvest sense. So I think that at come Passover, basically, you know, you bear in mind that a lot of these cycles are based on, okay, where's the moon after maybe a solstice, stuff like that. A lot of counting it as far as when this, when to, you know, it comes down, a lot of this boils down to when are you going to pick a harvest? Is it going to be X number of days after this or that? So there's something, so basically it's a, it's a count of 50 days. Uh, but in addition to just sort of having that harvest thing and, you know, a lot of, you know, being grateful to God, all, all that sort of thing. There's also an idea, you know, planting, sowing, all of that. There's also this, this idea in Kabbalah of, and I'll go ahead and take a quick diversion here, of um, this idea of the Tree of Life, which you've probably seen before. So this is the Lurianic Tree of Life. I'll just go ahead and, you know, show it here briefly, as quickly as one can say anything, we're doing anything brief with the Tree of Life. Okay, so... This would be, I'm going to really super simplify this. So this would be where the moon is. This would be where Venus is. Um, this is sort of like the hermetic version <laughs> of the um, Lurianic tree of life. And this is where the sun is. And this is where Jupiter is. Very much oversimplifying, okay? So don't worry about, eh, I shouldn't have put that there. I'll put it right here. The sun. Okay, sun is right here. So, and then you get one more up here, another one up here, and then finally, uh, you have God, which is the, the crown here. Okay, so I'm just going to, so you see, and this is where Saturn is. Okay, so this area right here is basically... I'm going to really, really super oversimplify this. Um, in fact, I'm going to skip a lot of this. Okay, so accounting the, of the Omer. Okay, this is a four, where did I put it? Ooh, I know where it is. Okay, counting of the Omer. This is basically, see, I knew I had this. Hit. This is basically, basically a 50-day ritual, right? Or a 49-ish day ritual practice or celebration or what observance so that's a that's the word i'm looking for um but in the kabbalistic tradition the idea is basically that with you can do something kind of akin to this 49 day task plus one which is like at the end you basically get to saturn so you have one you have uh this down here which is basically the world of earth and the four elements right and I'm, I'm throwing in some other stuff so just bear with me here but you have malkut which is basically the world of action the physical world then you start working your way up to more and more rarefied states okay so but you notice here if you do a count you have one two three four five six seven and the whole idea here is that you basically, within each of these little circles or sephirot, you would have another one of these trees in here, right? So you're basically saying this thing can be condensed down within each within another one of these. That is part of its own tree of life, okay? So that's what this is. This is a tree of life, and the whole idea is basically you're going to proceed up through here but you're going to do this one two three four five six seven you're going to do that seven times within each of you so you're going to you're going to go through this whole tree seven times you know going to go through each mini circle within this bigger circle uh seven times and you're going to go up here seven times so this whole idea is basically you're going to do seven 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 and so on until you finally get to the seventh of the seventh up here. So I'm really skipping a lot. And this is why you should be definitely reading the, this material that I'm mentioning up here. Um, and I'll come back to it. But 
the whole idea is that, okay, once you've done all of this, you get to here, right? And then you've this, by the time you've done this, you have done 49. Uh, by the time you get to the seventh of the seventh one, you're going to then have a 50th day in which the gate of Bina, the final, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a, it's been a long uh, 10 days of Bina. The 50th one is actually when you swing open and you get up into this supernal consciousness. And when I say supernal, I'm just talking about like, cosmic level consciousness of where God in his mercy is revealing to you things that he wants you to know and he has called you to do, right? And if he hasn't called you to this, you would just ignore all of this because you haven't been called, right? Um, so anyway, so these are just ways to think about it. So what is Bina? Okay, why would you do all of this? Why? Why, 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 why? <laughs> well, Bina is understanding. Aha! I know why now. <laughs> okay? So you're doing this whole thing to gain this heavenly understanding of whatever it is God wants to show you. Right? And I would presume that that would be different for everybody. But this is the technique that Aaron Leach says, okay, instead of... So, so that's Bina. And that's Bina, and that's ruled by Saturn. That's why I put Saturn up here. Um, or, or complemented by whatever you want to do. But then over here, you notice that there's three of these. So this is the first one. This one over here is Chokmah, which is Hebrew for wisdom. Okay, and then up here is Keter and the crown. And this is all, again, this is all a hermetic version of a much, much more complicated versions of the system. Okay, but I'm just throwing all this out there. So you get gates of wisdom and blah, blah, blah. So this is a parallel to an actual Jewish tradition of this counting of the Amer. Okay. Now, when I say wisdom, I said wisdom is Chokmah. And she is usually considered in the Enochian system to kind of have a parallel in terms of the angel Galva, who is not only a mother of these ch angels known as the children of light, but she is... Uh, She's her garments are known as are called Hoxmark or Hoxmarch or ho, Hoxmark, you know, it's very similar to Hokma. So you get these kind of parallels in the actual Enochian language. So I'm just I'm just mentioning all of this, okay, to let you know there's there's a lot of crossover here between what seems like it should be an unrelated system, the Kabbalist, a lot of ideas that haven't been fully fleshed out yet there's a lot of or at least maybe contemporaneously getting fleshed out um in terms of like a whole tree of life that you do stuff and then what the angels are telling john d and edward kelly in a christian magical version now why am i why did it make, make such a big deal about the counting of the Umer? it's 49 days and then there's a 50th day when you know it's it sort of concludes okay so the number 50, just for those of you who are very interested in the gematria path of the, the Kabbalah, is the number 50 is associated not only with the letter Nun, which is the, let me see, the 14th, I want to say, letter of the Hebrew alphabet, or Aleph Bet, if you will. At any rate, that's the value. That's the numerical value of that letter, because it goes up to 10 with Yod and then Instead of 11, you have 20, 30, 40, 50. Yeah, so 14th letter. Um, but that has a value of 50, right? Because instead of going from 10 to 11, you go from 10 to 20, 30, 40, etc. So 50, but that's also the Hebrew, uh, the value, gematria value, for the word me, which means who in English, right? So Bill Heydrich talks about how um, when you, if you really get down to, you know, the importance of like spiritual development is, is you, you sort of strip away the ego. Then the question is who, right? You know, you don't see anybody. Who are you talking about? Right? That sort of idea. So I do recommend his website. And it's just this name, billheidrick.com. 
look up a lot of these values. You can find them in there. And he contrasts this with the Hebrew word ma, which is what. So why, why am I bringing this up? Well, you, the idea is you're stripping away through this ritual. <laughs> Uh, you're stripping away for a bit, for a time, right? Your ego and delusion about material reality. And in, uh, 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 you know, this would be sort of, oh, I'm trying to remember this name in Buddhism. Basically delusion, right? You're trying to strip away delusion and get to the real core source of reality, which in Buddhism would be called the clear mind. You know, you would say divine union in Christian terms, stuff like that which allows for wisdom to come in. It, it leaves behind these other things and in its place you have wisdom, right? So hence, you know, or, and instead of, instead of understanding, you know, using this counting of the Omer path, you would use chokmah. And by the way, this counting of the Omer, I have a parallel for this in the 111 Enochian prayers. So if you look for that and you're con interested in doing something like this, Look up Omer, uh, the counting of the Omer, the time for this ritual, and then you will see when that's uh, when that is. Uh, you know that falls at a certain set period of dates every year, and then you can actually engage with that, or at least learn about it. You know, if you're interested in Judaism, I'm not an expert in that. I have a couple of friends who are rabbis, uh, people who I hold. Uh, you know, I'm. I feel close to, but, um, again, I don't, I can't say, you know, I'm not, I'm definitely not Jewish. I can't speak to that with any authority. Okay. I'm just a guy who's learning from another guy who has, he has father in front of his name. I don't have that. I'm just trying my best to, um, to lay this out, to lay out this ritual, which, you know, in a lot of ways, I found it to be a capstone course as it were. <laughs> Okay, so now we get into the how, right? How? So Aaron Leach, he mentions the counting of the Omer. And again, just let's break down what, what that would be. That would be 49, maybe 50, maybe that extra day for stuff to swing open, uh, to, for the breakthrough to happen. But 49-ish days, which I learned is seven weeks. <laughs> So he suggests a format in which you do you pray three times a day. This is very much in the Western tradition of sanctification and you know morning, noon, and night, right? We say that sunrise, noon, and sunset, right? Your entire waking hours being devoted to God. Okay. Uh, he recommends the you know reciting the prayer of Enoch, which was delivered to John D and Edward Kelly by the angel Ave. Uh, and I would just say you might consider adapting that, which is what I did. Uh, you might consider every day maybe doing going to a prayer of supplication, which would have come at an earlier point uh, in previous videos. I think I've mentioned that. It's the part of the 19-day ritual. So, but notice here we got 49. Well, we also have seven kings, princes of a planet, so... You know, sat, you know, seven kings, each one of them assigned a planet, you know, or associated with the planet. So you can do one heptarchical group and of, you know, you know, the king, the prince, you know, the ministers. You could do all of the ministers. You might consider if you're going to follow Aaron Leach's, I put down EEG somewhere here. You know, essentially Noki and Grimoire. There we go. Um, you might consider doing one of those uh, a day, and therefore you will, you will run through the cycle seven times. Now, in the EEG, Aaron Leach talks about how there are different um, assigned, basically, ministers for different parts of the day. So because of that, you know, there are 42 ministers overall, but really you would only cycle through, um, and, and so there are six of those in all, you know, six groups, basically, uh, but each of those, you know, for, for, if you wanted to speak specifically to them, you would speak to six of the, to, excuse me, to three of those. And it's like, it basically is like 12 to four and then one, two, three, et cetera, down is seven, right? And then whatever. So from 12 to four, you know, AM basically, right? In the morning. 
you would do 12 to 4. So just ignore this for a second. So there would be 7, and then one another group of 7 at noon, and another group of 7. So you would be basically calling 21 ministers that day overall, plus one king, that's not 1,000, one king, <laughs> plus one prince, and you would be talking to all five of the governors. So this is an idea of who you might want to call up, because you would get seven kings, seven princes go through seven uh, times a day, or, or go, through, go through seven sets, seven rounds, basically, over the 49 days. So that would leave 28. And by the way, 28 is also the number of letters actually used in the Sigillum de Ameth. And isn't that interesting, right? Okay, so what else is new? What else is going on? So what else is 49 related to? 49 Enochian calls. Hmm. So you could do one a day, or one call a day, and then just do it three times in that day, basically. Or you might consider doing always reading calls one and two, and then you would get the three, three times three a day. Now, why do I say that? Because you'd be all, always be calling the heptarchia. So consider doing that, right? Uh, but regardless of how you do it, you would be going through all 30 aethers and then the watchtower calls, calls three through 16. And uh, you might consider also, okay, I'm going to do the watchtower, you know, so I do the 30 leading days, one, th you know, one through 30. And then I'm switching over from these 49 calls to the aethers to calls three through 16, which are all, and then also calling forward all the associated angels. So you see what I'm doing here. I'm saying, let's do, let's find as many different directions towards the center. So we can sort of like, very precisely, with a lot of precision, try to navigate towards a very, very, very still and holy place. All right, so this is a rationale, <laughs> okay? Is this the way to do it? No, <laughs> this is a way to do it. This is an idea, this isn't even a way to do it. This is an idea for an approach of how to do it, right? Because the doing it is, is always at something. So, okay, so you're calling forward the angels of the heptarchy and the watchtowers. And then you get to uh, the final two calls. And I would just suggest throwing in any other angels you know about. There's Karmara, Hagunel. You might also consider over these 49 days, the angels of light, um, the children of light, you know, basically the sons and daughters and sons and sons of daughters, blah, blah, blah. These should all be review for you. Okay, so we've got the Heptarchy, we've got the Watchtower Angels, and we've got additional angels you call on the final two days. But what? how else might you think about doing this? Well, remember the third part of the tool, the, the middle part basically is the Book of Libra Loga, and we also talked about the Book of Silvered Leaves, okay? So for this, you could actually read off, you know, read off one leaf a day. In the morning, maybe the back, in the, read the front off at noon, and then the evening, do both. So my suggestion, if you did that, would be to print out a version in the Roman slash English letters. So you can actually sort of think about how to pronounce it in advance. And if you do that, mind the rotated letter, sometimes you're going to have to have, read two or three things. Okay. So all of this is to say that if you haven't guessed by now, if you really, really are doing the deep cuts, I have done this before. <laughs> I did this back in 21. Uh, but what you might not know is that I plan on doing this again. And I plan on doing this uh, around my birthday in late April and getting things going that way because that's where Passover falls this year. So it's kind of the astrologer in me like, is like, okay, you're doing this video, you know, roughly at a 90 degree angle <laughs> from the ecliptic. But at any rate, I don't, I'm not making too big of a deal out of that. But I do want to say, right, that, <clears throat> that it's a commitment, right? In case you haven't noticed, <laughs> it's a commitment, right? How long does it take? Um, the final day when you're, 
when you're reading the all of leaf one that's a very long time you read the front the i think the back half took me about almost like let's say 50 minutes and then the front took me an hour and a half and then front and back just forget about it right <laughs> and it did take my my voice was sore the next day um so so i would expect it to take not quite as long for each of the other days because if you've ever looked at those different leaves there's they're no they're not as long okay they're nowhere near as long they're you know 2400 letters but you break that down you know it's not as bad for libra loga and for the book of silver leaves it was 49 words for the for those pages that had words so so yeah <laughs> So that's coming up. And as what as I did in 2021, uh, by the way, just as a side note, what I found is that in this journey, the, the angels did talk a lot about the first shall be last, last shall be first in this work with John D. And just as a reminder, you know, the real step back, what John D was trying to do was he was trying to find another path to wisdom. And I think that you know, the nice thing, the, the, the amazing thing, not just nice, the amazing thing that Jesus Christ did on earth was he spoke from such a place of, of quiet wisdom, right? And he would talk to people and, you know, he'd engage with them. It didn't matter, you know, and it shouldn't matter where somebody's coming from in order for you to relate to them, right? You know, except for the most extreme circumstances. But even, even as he's dying on the cross, he's talking to, to Barabbas and all of that. And by the way, um, a good example, I'm not going to, you know, you can look up the Jeb of Hall thing that I did from 21 on my website, but the thing that actually inspired me about it was uh, a guy named uh, Freighter Barabbas. And I can't, I'll try to find his record of that, but it, it was something that Scott, Scott Stenwick, uh, who I was uh, a guest with on uh, uh what magic is this? Uh, Scott Stenwick, Stenwick was very impressed. And this is sort of me when I was definitely a baby magician, just very interested in all things. And it was really interesting seeing somebody go through that process. So I hope that, um, you know, it's, it's just to say you can learn from a whole bunch of people. And I definitely learned a lot from that. So, and the whole idea of like taking on an ordeal, it's like, okay, oh, yeah, that's interesting. So, okay. So I plan on doing this again, uh, but oh yeah. The, so the angels, they talk about the first shall be last, last shall be first. So there seems to be this thing where they show you and then they have to show you again. And I'm not sure what that is entirely. Is it that, you know, they're they're trying to remind you over and over again that this is a deeper thing when you're engaging with spirituality than you think it is always reminding you that there's more to learn more to grow more to develop so you don't i don't know fall into pride who knows right but i do i have found that a lot that that there's this idea of revisit revisiting things and by the way when i did this in um 21 i'm pretty sure i started on a sunday and ended on a sunday uh technically the next day monday uh you know for the 50 days but um or ended on ended on a saturday i should say so technically the next sunday and this go round uh it looks like um the dates are falling on a tuesday i could be wrong so don't quote me on that but that would be interesting to me because the enochian order goes venus sun mars so you get sunday and then mars's day on tuesday so anyway that's it um obviously <laughs> this is kind of you know the idea of a capstone and i do want to thank uh aaron leach for just making these materials available i'm not sure he was necessarily expecting it this way he and i have had a you know a decent correspondence um he's been very helpful and i've I've bought a lot of his books. <laughs> um, just an amazing, an amazing mind uh, when it comes to all things Enochian. Very grateful for the work that he's done and really that he's given to the entire community. Um, I really do recommend checking out his 
everything. Because <laughs> the man works hard, right? Um, okay, so, so that's it. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. Uh, clearly, I'm trying to... I'm trying to be like the finger pointing at the moon. Uh, or as Pro Pope Francis said, you know, he felt like the church, the Catholic church had become, felt like it was the sun when really he felt like it should be like the moon in the sense that it is reflecting that. So I'm trying to not, I'm trying to be like the finger who's pointing to the moon, who's, who, who, from these people who are just way better than I am at this stuff. Uh, I'm really just trying to help make sense of this and suggest possible paths, you know. I'm not an expert, um, and I do recommend, uh, you know, if you've, if you've gone this far, that's great, but I always recommend finding a multitude of sources because it's we're all learning from each other here, okay? Okay, that's it. Uh, I'm rambling. It's been a long week. I really appreciate you watching this video, and once again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, leave them in the comments or you can contact me through my website enokian.today <laughs> all right love you all bye